traditional media is in a huge, big, big, big period of transformation. And you know, you really have to look at the signs to figure out what's, what's going on. It's huge transformation right now. John, I want to thank you for taking the time to come here this morning. Thanks very much for having really me. Appreciate, appreciate it. it, yeah. Now, this is the first time in the history of my podcast, which is a very short history, that I've double booked. Yeah, no worries. I have you in here, and I have the famous Konishki. The in man. the background, everybody. The man. You're, the man. You're, 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 <laughs> So John, I know I know that you're the president over the History Channel, you're uh -huh. the CEO of the History Channel. I'm, I'm running A&E Networks Japan, and so we have the History Channel, and we also have Lifetime, which is a woman's channel, okay. and Crime Investigation. And so as a channel on cable and satellite, we only have history, but on digital, we're on 10 different platforms, we have all three services. We're going to get into this. There we that go. That is there nice. Go. <laughs> that's, what, that's beautiful. So where were you born? I was born in Suginami. Suginami? Yeah, in, in Tokyo. In Tokyo? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. I left when I was two, so I have no memory. Was your mother Japanese? No. Do I, do I look? No, Jap I was wondering. <laughs> I mean, when you said that, I started thinking, maybe you could be. No, because no, sometimes, no, yeah. sometimes when you have, you know, um, a, a one, foreign fam one foreign father or yeah. mother, mm -hmm. you do not know who the children are going to look like. Right, you right. Know? So I've seen that happen sometimes. So you're born in Suginami. Yep. And? Uh, and so at two years old, I went back to the States, of mm -hmm. course, no memory. Apparently they took a, a ship, uh, ocean liner back uh, and said it was a good tour, but uh, I have no memory of that. But it went back and we went to uh, Palo Alto where my father got his PhD. Um, in what? In political science. Okay. And so he was a professor of Japanese political science mm -hmm. and he was in Japan to study um, political science and he was here four years including the 64 Olympics, and said that was a great experience. So. Okay, so, so do you have any other siblings? Yeah, I have a younger sister and a younger brother. Okay, so how many years difference between you and them? Two each. Oh, two each. So my brother was born four years after me, yeah. Are you close with them? Yeah, yeah, for both of them, yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good, that's good. Yeah. What about your mother and father? Uh, are they still? Both are, are okay, uh, stable. And they're still in Palo Alto? No, no, so Palo Alto was only for my father's education, okay. for his PhD. Then we went to Florida, mm -hmm. uh, where he was professor at Florida State mm. uh, in Tallahassee, which is a very small southern town. <laughs> and uh, then we, for junior high school, I moved to Colorado, okay. and that's kind of what I consider my home. I stayed there through high school and then went to college in Colorado as well, right. at Colorado College. Uh, yeah. And that's where I did an exchange program to Waseda uh, University my third year and did a homestay and all that. And fell in love with Japan and that's why I've been here so long so is that where you that's where you got your interest yes well I, I had the interest I mean I, I had interest in studying abroad somewhere mm -hmm. no one was I'm old guy so no one was teaching Japanese in public schools back then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so uh, I wanted to take something and uh, and I've told the story many times but and they, they had French and all the cute girls were taking French so that was my first choice okay obviously and then they had Spanish, and in Colorado there's a lot big Hispanic community, so everybody and their brother was taking Spanish, right. which wasn't, didn't really appeal to me too much. Um, and they had Russian. And I thought, that is just so weird and different, I should learn it. And not because of Cold War or anything like that, just because it's weird and different. And so I took it all the way up to college, and I realized, wait a second, there are only three careers available if I learn this language. Wait, you, you took Russian in high From school? From junior high school. From junior high school? All the way to my sophomore year in college. Wait, so you speak Russian? Did you keep it up? I know. I, I can say but a few words. But you can remember a lot of it. I can say a few words, yeah, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but there's three careers. It's Cold War, so mm -hmm. you can do the military, right. you can do the State Department, or right. you can do CIA or something like that. Right, right, right. So I figured maybe I should learn something else. And growing up, uh, we had, I knew I was born in Japan because you have to write forms on where you're born and mm -hmm. Tokyo, Japan, mm -hmm. and, and kids in elementary school said, where's that, China? And I, no, right, it's not course. China. No. That's right, it was China. Yeah, so I really thought that. Um, and we had art in the house, and my father, because he was a professor of Japanese political science, would have guests over. Um, so I thought maybe I should, you know, because Japan is becoming this big economic power back then, so maybe I should learn Japanese and study in Japan rather than go to the Soviet Union. 
and that was a great choice. This is your first year in college? This is my third year in college. Third year in college, you decided to study Japanese. Yes, and I went to Japan, and I did a crash course, and then uh, two weeks in Ohio at some university that taught Japanese, and then they sent us to Japan. I knew just very little, um, but I wasn't daunted by the language because, you know, I studied Russian, and everything is different. You can't read it if, mm -hmm. unless you know it, and the Japanese is the same. Mm -hmm. And I was first struck me as like, wow, the grammar is so easy compared to Russian. And it's true. You had something to compare uh, the, with, with the right? grammar. The grammar is simple. There's, there's no plural, and Russian has these case, seven different cases. They have three genders, if you can believe that. Um, and the whole, every word changes depending on, you know, what you're saying in the context. It, it, it's very, very complicated. And Just out of curiosity, what are the three genders? Uh, masculine, feminine, and neutral. <laughs> this isn't something new. Something this is, we've always had that. This is, well, so words change. Like, right, of course. If it has an A on the end, usually it's a feminine. If it's an O on the end, it's, it's masculine. And I forget what the, a neutral one is, okay. but uh, yeah. Right. What kind of sport? Did you like sports in school? Yeah, 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 of course I did. So what did you, what did you like? Uh, I, I, I wasn't big enough to do sumo, so, okay. uh, and I did, I did football when I was in elementary school, and then all of a sudden everybody got big, and I, <laughs> and I, I just couldn't, I couldn't compete, so, so why I got it. Why didn't you become a gymnast? I, 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 I always thought about that. I did judo also mm -hmm. in, in elementary school, and, uh, and it, it was done in a gymnasium, mm -hmm. and I saw the stuff that they were doing, I said, wow, that's really cool. But um, for some reason, I didn't do it, and mm -hmm. I, I did soccer and uh, swimming, and uh, also when we moved to Colorado, I got into skiing, mm -hmm. um, and of course tennis and um, and jogging just to stay in shape. Mm -hmm. So all kinds of things. So get back to the, the the Japanese lessons. So you decided to come to Japan, but what was your major in college? Political science. Political science. Yeah, so well, okay. uh, political economy is there, actually. Economy, so it's okay. a combination of political science and economics and then how could you take off just to come to study Japan, Japanese? So my Japanese. university, Colorado College, had a relationship with Waseda. Okay. Uh, and so all the credits that I, could, I had in my third year in Waseda mm -hmm. were transferable to my school because mm -hmm. of this relationship. Mm -hmm. And they sent kids over too, so okay. it was a mutual thing. So. so what year was this that you came? It was 1985. Okay, that wasn't bad. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. when the bubble just is before, just about to pop. Yeah, just well, it's going up, and everybody right. had lots of money, and, sure I, and I was a poor kid, student, you know, so I couldn't enjoy that life. But mm -hmm. it was good, yeah. So how long did you stay? Just a year. Just a year, yeah. A year, and then what happened? You went. Back. I went back, and I had to graduate, so I graduated, mm -hmm. and I wanted to come back to Japan because I knew I just got the scratch the surface on the language and learning about Japan, and and of course, the easiest way to come to Japan is to be an English teacher. So I. It was the first year of the JET program, so I did that. And they you were among the first year of the JET first program? First year of the JET program, yep. Okay. And they sent me to uh, Colorado's sister state, which is Yamagata, Yamagata, which was great because nobody spoke English, so I could really mm -hmm. learn Japanese. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's a dialect that's pretty strong up there, so, right, right. Um, but it was a great experience. I did that for a year. Uh, and then I got into my, my current field is media. Um, I became a reporter for Japan Times. How did that happen? How did you morph into that? I, I said, look, I, I can't be an English teacher, you know, my whole life. Um, I got to do something with my, my life and do something interesting. I still want to be in Japan, learn more. Um, and I like writing. So uh, I saw this ad in the Japan Times for a reporter in Osaka, and I, I wrote to them, and they said, well, write an article for us. And I said, Oh, well, that's cool. And so um, it was a time of the the uh, Boiki Masatsu, the trade wars, mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of the issues was agriculture. And Yamagata is the biggest producer of cherries, and U.S. black cherries were not being permitted. And so I went to interview farmers, and then the Nokio, uh, the Agricultural Association, and asked them about their views on. For who? For Japan Times, because Japan they, Times, okay. they they asked me to okay. as a sort of a test okay. uh, before they hired me to write an article. They didn't pay me anything, so right, right. Uh, and I wrote the article and they liked it and I even printed it, um, and I got the job. So, so uh, and then that's what you did. Just and then around. then I went to Osaka and lived there for two years, being a reporter. Mm -hmm. um, great experience. Met a lot of my friends, lifelong friends, and we're still friends and we still go out and cause trouble in the town. Um, so uh, 
uh, that was a great experience. And being a reporter was one of the best ways to learn about Japan because you can talk to every, anybody and uh, learn lots of things. Um, and it was a great, great time. So after that, then what happened? What was the next job? After well, after that? that, so a lot of my, my foreign friends mm -hmm. uh, there were either in a consulate or they were expats. And I was living in a six mat tatami room uh, in a really bad neighborhood. There's a, uh, 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 not the onsen, but the sento, uh, the public bath next to my apartment, which I would go to and what's all. And you go in and then everybody has a tattoo on their back. <laughs> and and this uh, indeed before that it, was a popular thing. That yeah, was popular yeah this, this was, you know, they were part of some organization. Right. And some that, of them didn't have little pinkies yeah, or whatever. I didn't look there, okay, yeah, right. but yeah. So anyways, but they were very nice, you know, right. and they didn't ever cause any trouble. And then uh, a block away was the head of the North Korean Association of Japan. So, so the rent was cheap, um, but, and that was all I could afford on that salary. And I go to my friends' places, and they're living in these palaces, which I thought were palaces. And I go, wait a second, something's not right here. So I better, so how do I get to that position? And everybody said, you got to go back to the States and get a job, and they'll send you, if they send you to Japan, you'll get a better package. So I thought, that's interesting, but I really do like writing. And, uh, but I, I met some older reporters from, who were visiting from the States. And you know, if, once you're a reporter, that's your reporter for life. There's nothing beyond that, unless you become like a columnist and that sort of thing. So I thought, that's probably not for me. And what I want to get into, I really like business. And I was reporting a lot about business issues um, and you know, the trade wars time period. So we got into telecom and all kinds of stuff like that. So it was quite interesting. So, Let's go back. And so I went back to my hometown in Denver. Um, and at just that moment, uh, the largest cable TV company in the US was about to form a joint venture with Sumitomo to start a cable operation in Japan. And I saw it in the news, the local news, and they interviewed um, the person who was in charge of that effort, um, great woman from the UK. and. Um, and, I, and I, I wrote to her. I said, look, I've got Japan experience, and I forget what I wrote, but you know, would love to talk to you about what kind of opportunities are, how I can help you. And she called me in. And, and so I, I went in and interviewed, and next thing you know, I was working for them, helping what's them. What's the name of the company? The name <laughs> of the company then was uh, TCI. TCI. Okay. But it, it morphed into what's now known as Liberty Media. Okay. And they own everything, including F1 and Discovery and all kinds of stuff. So, mm. a huge company. John Malone is the chairman. I had to pick him up at the airport every once in a while and got some crazy stories about that too. But, yeah. um, we'll do that in part two. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so I, I got the job, and, they, and in 1995, they said, okay, we've, we've signed the deal, moved to Japan. And mm -hmm. so, I moved to Japan, and I've been here uh, ever since. Couple jobs well, after that, but well, yeah. well, so can you go through, go through the jobs? A few of the jobs to where you are now. Okay, so after, after so I was at uh, Liberty Media, mm -hmm. seconded to uh, this company which we call JCom, mm -hmm. so the largest cable operation in Japan, mm -hmm. and so I did that for five years, I think, um, and then I went to another cable company, which doesn't exist anymore. Actually, JCom bought them, um, and then in the meantime, Liberty Media sold. There's their 50% share uh, uh, in JCOM to KDDI. So now it's a Sumitomo KDDI company. Uh, and then after this cable company, I went did an internet thing for a little bit, and then I got a job at 20th Century Fox. So I was uh, marketing movies for theatrical distribution, so in the theaters, not DVDs. Um, from, what year was that? Late 90s. Okay. Oh no! Wait, no. Uh, be, uh, 2001, I think. Right. Uh, so um, my first movie, first big movie, was Day After Tomorrow, the, where the world mm -hmm. freezes over. Right. And the last one was Die Hard 4. Okay. And in between was uh, Devil Wears Prada and uh, Alien vs Predator and things right. like that. So all kinds of movies. So you were Fox. So you were bringing the movies over here. Yes, for theatrical distribu distribution, okay. and right. we brought in talent, and we did right. crazy things. And Konishiki actually came to one of our uh, Budai Aisatsu, where he, he, we, we paid him a lot of money, which I thought was really crazy, but I knew he was big, and we got big, <laughs> we got big press coverage for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I forget which movie that was, but um, it was a big one. That's the one we did at uh, Yoyogi. Was that Yoyogi? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I forget, it was a long time ago, so yeah. But thank you for that. 
uh, it was very successful. Um, uh, and so we brought in talent all the time, you know, from uh, Ridley Scott to uh, Will Smith, mm -hmm. um, of course, for um, uh, Bruce Willis for right. yeah, Die Hard. Yeah, right. So all those, all those, and so Hathaway for Devil. So Devil's right Brother. now, so right now, what's, how's your business going now after COVID and everything? And after that, so so yeah. after that, I joined uh, Apple and ran the iTunes business, did the marketing and the movies and uh, gift cards. Um, and then for some reason, I decided to become a vacuum cleaner salesman and I joined Dyson. <laughs> so I worked there for a few years, okay. uh, doing marketing, of course. Just to get them started. Yeah, yeah, they were started, but then they were in a big slump. And you pulled them out of that. And doubled sales, doubled you know, profits. Took care of yeah. you, and you said, okay. This and the then I'm done, yeah, and they changed. Right. A, lot of, a lot of things happened, but then right. and it changed, the company changed, so I figured this is not for me. So uh, eventually I got a job here at a &E Networks in Japan, and um, uh, the business is actually great and we can talk about why it's great right. d d despite the fact that traditional media is in a huge big, big, big period of transformation and you know you really have to look at the signs to figure out what's what's going on it's huge transformation right now um, and if you look at the signs you can realize wow this is who's going to be alive in a few right. years you know so yeah. it's it's a really big because that's period of time because change. I think I think because of this COVID thing, a lot of people in the in the press we got in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, with the last administration we had, people have just stopped watching television. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. And all this stuff on demand has become really popular. So I've been wondering, how does regular television continue to exist? And people tend to listen more than they watch now. Podcasts are big. Podcasts yes. are really yeah. big, but not yeah. YouTube. YouTube is big too because you there's so much variety, but it's hard to get people coming just to your area. Because there's so much to pick from. Yep, yep. But podcasts are really big because people just say, I want to do what I want to do and listen. Yep, yep, yep. So how are you surviving? So, well, first of all, let's look at what's happening to the media. So what we all see every day. We see, um, first of all, you notice that there's a lot of variety shows mm -hmm. where you have a talent host with a panel of other talent making witty remarks and that sort of thing, and they show some videos and stuff like that. There's many more of those now than there used to be. And there used to be lots of great dramas and things like that, which we would all watch, and still great dramas. But the reason why is that those variety shows are a lot cheaper to make. And so, so they're, the TV networks are trying to reduce their costs because people aren't watching. And because people aren't watching, advertisers aren't spending money. And so they, they, the whole model is based on the TV networks create this great content that people watch. Eyeballs are there, so advertisers pay to advertise. Adver so people aren't watching. Therefore, advertisers are not spending money. And therefore, the networks are also in decline. And they've been declining maybe like uh, several per points, percentage points in uh, revenue a year. But they've held it up by something else we've also seen on TV is infomercials. There's a plethora of infomercials on TV now, which before you would never see. Mm. And they would never permit them because it would cheapen the channel. And so now it's all over the place and you're seeing supplements to help your eyes, to help your bowels, uh, <laughs> to give you a flatter stomach and all kinds of things. And whereas before it was like sleek car commercials or beer commercials or something like that. And it's, it's all changed. So they're propping up their income with these infomercials. Um, which also kind of turns off viewers as well. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a challenge, and that's what we're doing as well. Um, which you're doing infomercials as we're well. We're doing infomercials. Yeah, okay. we're doing infomercials, and it, it pays the bills, keeps the lights okay, on. Okay. But uh, <laughs> um, but in pay TV business, which is a little bit different, we right. do aver we have advertising advertisements, but we get a subscription fee from cable and satellite um, companies who charge their viewers and. Mm -hmm. Every year, people are what's called cutting the cord. So people are canceling their service to cable and satellite. And this is a global phenomenon. And so we're down, not too much every year, but around three, four percent every year, um, subscribers decline. And it's particularly evident on Sky Perfect. They're in a steep decline right now. Mm -hmm. So how, but we are growing our top line and our profits. And so how are, 
Well, yes. let's go. Let's look at the right, the right. TV networks too. How are they growing? First of all, we talked about infomercials. Mm -hmm. They're doing a lot more of those, and that's propping up their income. The second thing they're doing is getting into other businesses, and and what that is is that uh, most of them had big real realty uh, real estate properties. They've developed those into big businesses. So before the pandemic, half of the Fuji Group's profit was from real estate. They had office buildings, hotel chains, home, uh, individual home, uh, housing, that sort of thing. Huge business for them. So at, once the pandemic hit, it's, they took a, a, a dive. But before that, that was half their profits. So c can you imagine that? So a media company has done that. Also, if, you, if you're familiar with Osaka, which was one of my, my uh, great places to live, um, and our office, Japan Times, was right near the Asahi Shimbun office, which is this iconic building. The whole building was filled with, um, it's on Nakanoshima, with the Asahi Shimbun mm -hmm. guys. It's now a Conrad Hotel and, and a <laughs> office building. Did they, did they tear it down? They tore they the whole thing down. It's a beautiful, and tall building. And that's building. still there? Property. Asai, Asai Shimbu moved next door, across the street, and they rebuilt the, the building. building. No, it's a it's another big building which is Festival Hall. So they've mm -hmm. got a they always had this place where artists could go play right, concerts right, and that right, sort of thing, right. and movies and that, that sort of thing. Um, but it's got office buildings in there, and Asahi Shimbu is in there, not where they used to be, which is the Conrad Hotel and other offices. Which they and own, and they they own it, and they're collecting rent on that. So. Newspapers are also getting into it. So all the media are getting into these new businesses. And in Japan, because they had lots of real realty, that has worked out for them, except the pandemic has, has hurt their business. Okay. And so but, that's, but that's a, that's everybody's a having issue. Yeah. So the government it'll, it'll, says, it'll okay, come back. Yeah. Me, right. It'll come back. So, um, and so for us, we didn't have any real estate. <laughs> We're renting our office, and uh, we don't own anything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, headquarters has their own real estate but uh, in Japan we don't so what we did first of all is what what uh, what's what the trend is is um, digital streaming so mm -hmm. uh, so we said okay first of all we're gonna get on that that's growing subscribers are cutting the cord on cable and satellite and going to streaming services and we also had there's another big trend in, in, in the industry too is why are all these video streaming services popping up all of a sudden there, I mean, there's there's about 15 in Japan right now, and more are coming. So that's another topic we'll uh, I'd like to Dive talk about. Again, yes. um, but so um, so we got got into that, and we're on 10 different platforms right now, and that's a huge growing business for us. And the other thing we did was we got into advertising for uh, uh, clients, not not just saying oh, we'll put your beer commercial in here or your iPod commercial or your iPhone commercial, excuse me. Um, uh, we will create uh, programs for you. So we would create like, since we're, we do documentaries, for Citizen, we did a documentary. This is one of our big initial projects on their ProMaster watch. It was the 30th anniversary and, and they came to us. And normally when a company says, okay, I wanna do my, my anniversary, they're gonna go, oh, let's go back to the black and white photos with the, the mm. founder tinkering away in, in, the, in some factory. And we said, no, let's, let's not do that because you want to appeal to your, 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 your customers. And what do your customers care about? And ProMaster is a watch for diving and mm. mountain climbing and that sort of thing. Those customers care about the environment. So why not we feature five different adventurers around the world and what they are doing to help the environment? And it was a huge hit. It went global. It went to the states and all that. And that came from us. And based on that, we did other whole bunch of series. Each of, time, each time in those ProMasters, there'd be a guy with the watch on. But that was just the side note. The the, the major thing is about the environment. What humans uh -huh. are doing to the environment, and then how we've, you know, how 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 they are trying to help. And we brought awareness of this issue through this program, and we got paid for it. So this how is long great. Are these? How long are these? Oh, they, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's about an hour, but we cut it down into, into small segments for each of the adventurer. Gotcha. And we also created social media friendly bites that you could put on that sort of thing. So it, it was a great campaign. And that got us all a bunch of other deals, similar deals where we do these documentary like pro productions mm -hmm. um, for, for customers. And that got us into a, a next level where we said, okay, we'll do TV commercials for you. And then we'll also, we just got a customer uh, last year, 
which says, okay, be my ad agency. And so we go and buy time on terrestrial networks. So we're buying like, like Dentsu and Hakuhodo. Right, right. We're going and buying spots on TV. Uh, and so we become basically an ad agency. But you buy time, but what do you fill that time with? Well, we, put, we create a TV spot. And we gotcha. and we we play we buy the time and put it on terrestrial networks, so we become in effect an ad agency as well. As well, and so that's I mean our traditional business is down, but digital streaming, creating this content for advertisers, which we call branded content, and then ad agency, mm -hmm. has all grown our top line and our bottom line. Mm -hmm. And so, despite the the decline in the industry and for COVID, we had a record year last year. So. It's forcing um, people to think differently, think outside of the box. You have everywhere. to think outside of the box. Listen, yeah. Name six platforms, because you said you put them on many pla platforms. I just want to hear the name of the so platforms. There, there's so many, uh, some small and significant ones, which okay, right. we don't need to talk about. So the biggest one is Amazon. Okay. And so why are they the biggest? Because if you're a Prime user, when you get free delivery, you get free video. Right. Which, you know, it's great for the consumer, but it teaches the consumer that content is free. And there's a big that's cost. A, that's a bad thing. Right, <laughs> it's, right. it's a big cost of making content, so you, you, you don't want right. that. That's right. Uh, you don't want that. But anyway, it's a big service. Um, and then after that, um, for us, uh, Hulu, Hulu, and then you next. And Hulu in Japan is owned by uh, Nippon TV. They're not owned by Hulu in the States. Oh. They, they're licensing the name. So Hulu in the US launched it in Japan, and then they realized, actually they interviewed me once and to, to head up their business. And, and they, I said, well, look, you're gonna have to spend a lot of money on content, and you're gonna have to spend a lot of money on marketing. And they said, no, we don't need that. We just need to um, have our name get out there and show people the content is free and we'll put ads on it. And we did that in the States and it's gonna work in Japan. And I said, it's not gonna work. And so eventually they realized it didn't work and they sold it to Nippon TV. Um, and now Hulu is basically controlled by Disney in the States, but okay. Japan is still in, in Nippon TV. Well, Disney controls it? Yes. Since, so they, when they since they lost the, <laughs> since they didn't get the rights to their first Disney here. Yeah, yeah. well, the Di Disney controls Hulu outside Japan. Right, okay. And then Hulu Japan is just a license of the name right. by NTV. Oh. And they have, Disney got back a little share, but right. it's, it's minor. So, okay. um, so, that, so that's, the, that's the second largest one that we're on. Unext is another one, and you probably remember Usend. Uh, Usend, yes. Yeah, it's, I this have is the morphed into Unext. Unext, okay. Yeah, and so that's really so big it's gro and growing, um, mm -hmm. and they have a video service. Um, and then, uh, you know, of course, those are the top three big ones. And mm -hmm. then all the terrestrial networks have their own service, like mm -hmm. Fuji has FOD, um, uh, TBS, and TV Tokyo have Paravi, uh, okay. which is very small. Um, and. Uh, they all have their services, and but those are the big ones that we're on, the three big ones. But the other ones, of course, are Netflix and Disney Plus. We're not on those services. We're not on Netflix because Netflix, you know, takes the content and says Netflix original, and we our headquarters sells to Netflix, but we can't do that with our agreement with with headquarters. So, so we're not on from Japan's perspective. We're not on Netflix and Disney Plus. We're not on. Um, most likely because uh, they have uh, National Geographic and they're pushing that service. Uh, so we're not on there for the moment. I, mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Disney is actually a shareholder of us. They own 50% of us along with Hearst. So- uh, U.S. Yes. Disney. U.S. Disney owns, so we're and a Disney US company. Yeah. yeah, and U.S. Hearst, yeah. <laughs> so we're, but we're not on Disney Plus. Um, in the U.S., we're on Discovery, which is now merging with Warner, mm -hmm. and, and they've got a huge service that's coming to Japan. HBO Max yeah. is coming to Japan. So, that's, so how long have you been with AE now? Uh, let's see. I think this will be. This is my fifth year. So from July, it'll be five years. And you see it continuing for the foreseeable future. I think so, yeah. That's great. That's <laughs> fantastic. We'll fantastic. see. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, well, so one thing we didn't talk about is why, why are there so many different platforms? Digital well, platforms, yes, yes, and it's just it's recent, and more are coming. So we talked about HBO Max coming. Uh, Paramount has a service called Paramount Plus. Mm -hmm. NBC has a service called Peacock. They're coming to Japan most likely. Um, and why is it happening? So what the the situation before was that Netflix and um, uh, Hulu were licensing content from all the studios, okay. and they created these huge services uh, around the world based on. Hollywood content from the studios. 
Then they started creating their own content, which you know moved into different areas. And and I think the kick, the, this is about my personal opinion. I think the really big thing what happened was that Netflix did an IPO and they had this amazing evaluation. It's evaluation. It's huge. It evaluated at a very high level compared to the studios, which weren't. They were smaller. Even Disney was smaller than Netflix, and Disney had theme parks. They had merchandising. It's like what, something's it's wrong here. Something's here. wrong here. So, so what re happened was they realized, you know, the, the economy today is not driven necessarily by oil anymore. It's driven by information on customers, mm -hmm. and you can monetize that. And so that's how Google's big. That's how Apple's big. It's how Amazon's big. Everybody's big on that, and Netflix is big on that too. So, so it's a, the studio said, okay. We need to get a part of that. We need to get our own service, <laughs> and and now Disney's valuation is way up uh, because of they, that. they bought well. They bought Fox. They bought Lucas. Before, Lucas first, then Fox, and then they started their own service. And now it's a huge, huge thing. And so that's why they're all starting their own services, and they're pulling their content back from Netflix. Uh, be, be, right, and, right, right, right. and then hence that's why Netflix is investing more to make their money. own originals. Right? And, and and this is the other kicker. So the the. Terrestrial networks only spend about only three billion tr combined, not in each case, three billion dollars a year on content production. Netflix spends seventeen billion. Seventeen, 17 billion. billion. Now uh, Disney sa is saying for their plus service alone, they're going to spend eight billion this year. They spend they're going to spend thirty billion total, and of course the stuff that they make for movies and TV will also get back on Disney Plus. So and then Warner uh, with. HBO Max is going to spend 20 billion a year. So, what are the terrestrial networks going to do? They're only spending 3 billion, and it's content that that variety shows. And so, wait, 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 wait. so they're going to have to have uh, coming of a heart of making, getting a different business model, mm -hmm. and they they have to monetize outside Japan because that's how Netflix is able to make so much, invest so much money, and make so much money, and Disney Plus. And they have to sell to other platforms too, mm -hmm. or do co-productions. And so I think we'll see more of that. And mm -hmm. we saw a recent deal um, with Netflix uh, and TBS, where they they created a drama and they aired it first on TBS, and then it went on Netflix. And so I think we're going to see more of that. that and then, Net of course, Netflix and other platforms are going to pay money. And Disney signed a deal with uh, Nippon TV to do something similar. So. We're going to see more of that. So they're going to try to get into the international space through through this area, and we're looking at that too, um, yeah. trying to work team up with local uh, producers and create content, Japanese content that sells internationally. So, so that's kind of. I wish happening. you all the best. On that. <laughs> that's <gonna be> fantastic. <laughs> and we're going to have to do this again. No? One thing that I did hear about Netflix is that, like you said, because they really pay attention to their customers and they look at the algorithms mm -hmm. and found out what they like and they started making their own movies based upon that information. Yep. And, and if you know, the big hits. And, and then, so the studios never did that. And so right. they would they would just <laughs> have some creator go, okay, I got an idea. And and it's, you know, and something similar was done 10 years ago and it was a big hit. Right, right, right. And right, then, right, so right. then they would make it. Right, but now and then they would show it to people and and, you know, people would, before it was finished, and people mm -hmm. would say, "I don't like that scene," or "I like that," and and then they would change it, and then it would be different from what the director originally right. wanted, and then they would go out and yeah, I find make it all money. changing yeah. because they even can tell on your computer what you're paying attention to, and yep. that's what they feed you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. With movies you've watched, and they know exactly, and they can make more money on that. That's right. So at knowing more about the consumer allows them to make go. more money. Therefore, that's yeah, why yeah. everybody's getting into that game. So there we go. Many more years of it. <laughs> I hope you have many more years. Thank Thanks, you sir. so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Really. I want to thank all of you out there watching this podcast. Make sure you press like, leave a comment, please leave some support, and subscribe. Remember, it's all unknown, so continue to reach for the stars because you're too blessed to be stressed. Mm -hmm.